Hey guys, welcome back. We are here with series number two today. It's going to be Psy versus EF nil for Psy. This game is inconsequential. They cannot make it to the playoffs in season two. But for um, for Eternal Friends, yeah, yeah, just, this has been going on for four years and it's only season two. Uh, we did have a 15 month season one, so that's why but this season or the, yeah this season has only been 12 weeks so far uh it's 13 weeks overall for the group stage and we'll have like three or four weeks for the playoffs so a lot shorter this time than we'll head into season three later in the year but uh this game is inconsequential as i mentioned for Psy. uh they cannot make it to the playoffs ef can uh, so ef are definitely going to be trying to win here let's have a look at how both these teams have done Psy storm currently at the bottom of the table with one win, nine match losses. A little bit unfortunate for them. They've had some very, very close matches. They just can't finish them off. Uh, it, and that sounds really dodgy, and I've just realized that. But essentially, Psystorm have come so, so close. I think they've actually been in a ton of ace matches, and they always fall short the last hurdle. Really, really unfortunate for them. Uh, they are, of course, the Bulgarian national team, essentially. Every single one of their players is Bulgarian. They've got a big community uh, that they're all part of as well. They do, like, events and stuff. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, speak to Size Grass, their clan leader. Uh, he is on Twitter, but I can't remember what his Twitter handle is. Uh, he posts about it all the time, so it's cool to read about that. Eternal Friends. Uh, Eternal Friends are a South American, Korean, uh, North American, I think as well, hybrid clan. They've got some Koreans, some South Americans. Uh, Eternal Friends haven't done the best of any team. They've uh, been kind of middling, but if I remember correctly, they are actually in the top eight at the moment. They may be in the top eight, or they might be 10th. Uh, or top ninth even they're very very close as uh, so this is going to be an incredibly important uh event for them an incredibly important matchup let's have a look at the rosters uh we're going to start with a uh, tbt between kiko and goku and i know there's a lot of people in chat who are going to suddenly disappear uh, but technically they are a mercenary squad if you're going to call it that but they are like teammates they're, they're a really good team uh, they also play a lot together, so it's kind of cool. Uh, but Kiko against Goku, that should be quite cool. It's going to be Bulgaria versus Peru. Then we're going to have Mitak versus Chalin. That should be a cool matchup. We're going to have Marine versus Pinkbrush in a PVT. That should be cool. And Cold versus Blaze. Uh, that should be another good matchup as well. So out of all of size matchups so far, I think this could be one of the more interesting ones. Uh, there's so many Bulgarian players on Psystorm, and it's usually the same ones that come out. So... Uh, Radley saying wow all my favorite Bulgarian players uh, but yeah I mean they are relatively good they've not had the best win rates uh, but there is there's three Zergs lucky noob there's Mitak, Cold and Chalin uh, so Yaj that's just because uh... okay Yaj come on man we don't do that that's... what are you doing come on come on Yaj uh, but this should be fun either, either way. Uh, starting off with a TBT is cool. But essentially, let's have a look at our first map we're going to be going into. It's going to be New Tornado. This is a really fun map for TBT. We've actually had seven of them so far. Uh, this is going to be the eighth TBT we've had on New Tornado. This is probably one of the highest played TBT maps we've ever had in the SCPL, uh, which is kind of cool. So uh, looking forward to seeing how it's going to play out. We've had some really good games here regardless. Let's introduce our players, starting us off for Psy. Uh, Grast actually sent me a new photo, but I really like this one. Uh, it's like Kiko, uh, Kiko playing football, and uh, essentially he's like ghosting all over the place. There's like ghosts behind him. Everyone is like really freaking out because uh, they've moved while the camera was shot or something. Uh, but <laughs> I like this picture a lot, uh, so I've just kept using it. I'm sorry, Kiko. Uh, hopefully you don't mind. Uh, but Kiko, he's not won a game so far, unfortunately. Uh, but not a problem. He's still a pretty good player and his opponent fighting for <laughs> Fighting for EF is gonna be Goku now Goku named of course after the famous Dragon Ball character Or maybe uh, maybe the famous Dragon Ball character is named after this Peruvian Terran uh, Really 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 cool player to watch. He's won his only TBT so far against Reyna. Reyna is a very good TBT player, so It's kind of cool um, Looking forward to seeing how that goes. 
and we'll have to see how well Goku's training has been playing off as we get in or has been paying off as we get into game number one it's marine wait I've loaded the wrong replay what the hell am I doing I'm sat in like game number game number three like let's go let's go <laughs> whoops okay well guys we know that game number three happened and then says, my friend James says, I thought everyone knew that Goku is an ancient and traditional Peruvian name. <laughs> That's pretty good. Where is... Oh, here it is. There we go. I missed it. Right. Now I've got the replay loading. Let's head into game number one. It's Kiko versus Goku on New Tornado. Okay, starting us off in the top left-hand position in the silver, fighting for, yeah, uh, fighting for Sai even, is Kiko. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom right-hand position from Peru, of course Kiko from Bulgaria. It is Goku fighting for EF. Bradley is saying, in TBT, Kiko must go for ghosts 100%. I trained him a lot with ghost play and gave him all the knowledge. Well, I'm hoping he's going to go ghost now because you've just hyped me up. This could be a really quick game, like someone's going to eat racks. You gave him all the knowledge, Radley. Did you teach him how to build, <laughs> build a barracks in the center of the map on 8 Supply? Is that what you taught him? There's not going to be any ghosts this game. What is this? Man. God damn. Well, it's going to be an 8 racks in the middle of the map. This is an incredibly big... Uh, it's an incredibly big gamble in TBT. And Albert's seeing it's a proxy ghost rush on, on 8 Supply. That's it. <laughs> Rapidly saying I told him not to be my secret 8 racks fast ghost into new main strat. <laughs> well... That would be amazing if that happens, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> this game is probably going to end within the next 5 to 10 minutes. The colors, I don't know what they look like on the overlay, but I actually quite like them in the game. Uh, they look pretty good for me, so... Like, um, I got... Uh, I'm not going to mention my monitor again. Now, someone's made a kick cellmate, uh, cellmate account. I don't know who that is. But essentially, I've not lived in my uh, my old like flat jail cell for like a, nearly a year now. So, well, I guess it's been more like eight months, eight nine months. This time last year was incredibly shit. So, uh, I do apologize if I do seem a little bit down today. But well. Here comes the rush. There's going to be a, a bunker in the main. Looks like there is going to be a marine out here, but there's a second SCV coming to help this along. Now there's a couple. There is a marine and SCV in the main, so he is going to be able to clean up the main from his opponent. Uh, clean up the marine from his opponent. Now here comes the SCVs. They've been pulled. Can he get the uh, marine back in the bunker? There's going to be two marines here. Three marines. Nice mineral walk there, though. Nice target firing as well. But the problem is, yes. Yes, you have a bunker. No, it's not in a very good place. Now, it looks like he is going to push forward. Let's see what the micro of Kiko is like. He pulls back his marines. He needs to build a forward bunker here, but he's losing his SCVs. And, I mean, Kiko's doing a pretty good job, but unfortunately... I mean, Goku's got a factory. Wait, does he... I thought he had a factory. He's got a factory in the middle of the map. Oh, my goodness. What on earth is this game? Is this a TV tier or have they both been, uh, both been infected by Protoss players? Man. Ugh, this game is disgusting. Take it away. <laughs> this isn't TVT. They must have seen the hour-long TV or the 45-minute TVT yesterday. I'm like, whoa, I'm out of that. I'm not doing that. That's too long. Yeah, I mean, the, the trouble is, yeah, there's going to be a second, second factory. There is a factory back at home. Wait. 
It's actually not that far behind, so he's going to be able to hold on here. And the thing is, because Goku stopped building, well, because he's built Marines, but later, Kiko's going to push forward with five Marines into the, six Marines into the base here. And there's going to be absolutely nothing that Goku has to defend back at home. He's going to have to send his Vulture back. If he sends a Vulture back, he's not going to be in a good spot. And there's going to be no Vultures building in the main. Now, let's check the micro of Kiko. He's doing pretty good job with his marines he's moving the damage ones but well that just disproves everything i've just said but so many marines here for kiko another marine pops out here for goku but unfortunately goku is not likely to win this situation i mean there is going to be a vulture soon from the proxy factory and it looks like there's no uh, vulture defending at least for the time being here for kiko so that could be pretty good this is a really exciting game i know i'm not really making it sound like it but uh I'm doing my best. The factory gets cancelled at the front here. The Marines continue to push forward at the front. More Marines continuing to be rallied in. The first Vulture is out. Let's see. Wow, wait. Oh my god, of course he didn't know where his opponent spawned. Oh no. So he sent the Vulture in the wrong location. He's going to move it up. He is going to be able to intercept the Vulture of Kiko. No, Kiko going the long way around. Now, finally, Goku does see it, but does he know where his opponent is? More and more SCVs are going down. Great Marine Micro here from Kiko, doing so, so much damage. It's 12 SCVs against 12. Kiko has a supply lead now, and there is a Vulture in play. This Vulture is worth its weight in gold. There's no Vulture back home defending. If the Vulture comes back, it's running into a bunker, and he still hasn't found his opponent. He sent the Vulture to the to the third base actually uh, misclicking his vulture a little bit maybe frustrated the rain's coming in cleaning up the rest of the units and Sai are looking to take a very quick 1-0 lead in this series great work by Kiko absolutely wonderful micro on his marines one SME is all that remains he does have 270 supply so I wouldn't blame him if he flies away and goes to build uh, it goes to rebuild somewhere. He can build vultures. He's still got all of his units. And I mean, the vulture is going to try and come in. But look at the repair. The repair going down, though. Two SCVs on the high ground. This is all Goku has. This could be a completely ridiculous base trade here. Uh, but look at the repair on that vulture. So, so strong. So powerful. And I mean, even if he's not mining, it doesn't matter. GG. Goku taps out. And Kiko wins game number one. There we go, that was game number one. It was an incredibly quick game, but they happen sometimes. That was probably the fastest TBT I've seen in a very long time. And uh, looking forward to seeing game number two. That'll be coming up as we get back after this short break. See you guys soon. Did you know it was possible to drop behind the naturals in Fighting Spirit? It's a bit finicky to land in the right place. You essentially need to... There's very specific spots in each of the spawns, which I'm going to try and show you here. There we go, there's one. So I believe there's actually more spots than this, but essentially it's quite hard to do. Uh, so you've got one here, I found two over here, there's also one here as well, you can also drop I think in this location. Uh, one thing to point out is the ghost cannot actually move, but of course what it does give you the option of doing is it allows you to move.
Okay guys, welcome back. We're here for game number two of Psy vs EF. Game number one was a ridiculously short TVT, uh, but it was very exciting nonetheless. And we're going to be heading into possibly another very short matchup here as we are going from TVT into ZBZ. Unfortunately for Lucky Noob, a Zerg is going to be losing this game. Uh, I know Lucky Noob likes a Zerg, so not sure how that's going to play out. But let's have a look at the players. Starting us off for EF is going to be Chaelin. Chaelin, a very strong female Zerg player from Korea. One for one against Zerg, so 50% win rate for her, 54% win ratio overall. Uh, it's going to be Korea versus Bulgaria, of course. In Chaelin's last five or last ten games, she's won five of them, so essentially a 50% win ratio recently. Not too bad. Her opponent going to be from Bulgaria. It's going to be Mitak. Now, Mitak has one of my favorite pictures in the entire SDPL because he specifically went out with friends to get this picture. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about it. I love, but it's a really good pic a really good picture. I love the pic I love the pickaxe. I love the like foggy background and everything. And overall, uh, just a just a pretty cool guy. He's only got 29% win rate. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but he's always up against really strong opponents, and uh, I definitely can't blame him for losing so many games. But regardless of losing, he comes out every single week and does his best, and he always has really, really, uh, really, really fun games to watch. So this is going to be a ZVZ, of course. He is one free against Zerg. Uh, so that could be a little bit more difficult. But let's have a look at the map we're going to be going into. It is going to be Blitzax. Now, Blitzax has very close by air positions. So this could be an, inc an incredibly quick ZVZ. We thought the TBT last game was quick. Check out Blitzax in ZVZ. There's not been too much. This is actually our first one. Uh, it's our first ZVZ in the entire tournament. And... Yeah, uh, this is going to be hard. It's a very, very difficult ZVZ on this map. Uh, like close by air, there's a very short rush distance by ground as well. Either Lings are going to win the game or the first Mutilis are. Let's see how it's going to go as we get into game number two. It's Chaelin versus Mitak on Blitzax. Okay, starting us in the top left position for EF, it's Chaelin, our Zerg player from South Korea, fighting for EF. And his opponent spawning up here in, I believe, this is the olive green. Starting for Sai from Bulgaria, it's Bitak. Now, ZVZ, it's a quick matchup normally, and when you have close by air positions, it's even quicker, so I don't really know what to expect here. I doubt either player is going to go for a 12 hatch. 12 hatch on this map would be absolutely crazy. And I don't know what we're going to see. I mean, it looks like... Mitak is building an overlord and not building a pool on nine, so that's definitely a difference. We've got Chaelin going immediately for the nine pool. Yeah, lucky noob. I think everyone roots for like swarm and like plague and, and snare and stuff in ZVZ, uh, but it's very, very rare that Zergs will get hive in ZVZ. So, I mean, we can always dream. It is the STPL, and as, as you know, anything can happen in STPL, so. Well, we'll have to see. I'm still waiting for the day we get a Hive ZVZ, but yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult. Now, Mitak is actually going for a 12 hatch. It's going to be in the main, so it's not completely impossible to hold on to. But it's going to be difficult against the 9 pool with gas, so there's going to be incredibly quick speed here. I mean, it could be for one hatch layer, but speed is more likely. And when you start ending up with uh, speedlings running through the gap in the middle of the map, they are going to get to the opponent's base incredibly quickly. Uh, Mitak is going to struggle a lot here. Now, the gas and pool coming up relatively shortly after each other. It was a 12 hatch, I think 11 gas, 10 pool, or 11 pool even. Uh, no additional drones have been added on for the time being. A couple just being added on now. But that's two lava that's just been spent when you don't have any Zerglings. And there are six Zerglings running across the map. 
to come and kill you and there's gonna be even more coming in soon it was lair first in fact so speed is gonna be put on the wayside looks like Chaelin just gonna be building a ton of slowlings and this this is definitely gonna be difficult there is two lava again there's gonna be a third hatchery popping in a creep colony coming in for a sunken but I mean six lings are already gonna be at Mitax base and Chaelin is looking to take an incredibly fast, even possibly the fastest STPL game ever. Two drones have gone down, three drones have gone down. Is there a fourth one? No, no fourth drone yet. Mithak pulling his drones miles away. Now the Sunken has finished. He, uh, Chaelin didn't manage to uh, focus that down before too late. Mithak got his uh, Sunken up. Perfect timing there. So Mithak is going to hold on. Chaelin. It's not going to end that with her first attack, but the Spire is already on the way. And, I mean, that was a nice hold, but realistically, when Mitak is on seven drones, he doesn't have a lair yet, and his opponent has a Spire building. Unless these links do critical damage, I don't see how Mitak can win this game. Uh, in terms of Ensnare, Ensnare does affect attack speed for most units, or at least a lot of units, but there are a good number of units it doesn't affect. Uh, devourers don't slow attack speed. Uh, devourers just make the units take more damage, I believe. And yeah, it, Ensnare works differently per unit as well. Uh, it's best against, like, Stim Marines, and it's also very good against Mutalisks, but... I don't think it affects Siege Tanks, if I remember rightly. I'm fairly certain Devourer doesn't affect attack speed anyway. Someone may be able to prove me wrong, because I'm not a Zerg player, but... I'm fairly certain uh, that's the way that works. Now, Chaelin holds a ramp with absolutely no issues whatsoever. There's no Evo Chamber. There is no Spire. There's no Lair. And Mitak, while he is even on drones, is about to fail the harsh, cold reality of Mutalus heading towards his base. And Chaelin should have this game in the bag. Now, oh my god, Mitak is going fully all in. That's it. Pulling everything. Gonna try and kill... Chaelin before she gets the chance. The Overlord coming in. This is going to be a drone drill at the top of the ramp to try and bug out the Zerglings. And let's see if this is going to work. I mean, when you're behind, why not try it? Go for a massive... Massive uh, counter-attack. And there we go. GG. The Mutalus pop out. Nothing Mitak can do about that. The attack is not going to come in. And uh, that's it. Oh my god. No way. The attack's going to go in anyway. <laughs> you can't call GG and do this. That's that's not right. This is wrong. I mean, that really didn't work, but I suppose he wanted to see if it definitely, if it was going to work or not. But yeah, that didn't work at all. That was a very, very quick game. Number two, five minutes, 33 seconds. It's how the cookie crumbles sometimes, but yeah, Mitak, unfortunately, that attack did not work. And uh, you probably won't be trying that one again. But definitely having the problem of getting attacked super early on by Lings when going for a really greedy 12 hatch build. It happens. There's not much you can do about it. So I'll be back after a very, very short break with game number two, uh, game number three even in this incredibly quick series so far. I could be finished super early today. Uh, that'll be, that'll be kind of nice, I guess, having a little bit of a break. But see you guys soon. Detected. Where has he put the nuke, though? Oh, man. I know it's somewhere in this location. But where? Where is the nuke? It's definitely... There we go. It's on top of the sunken. And boom! And the nuke goes down. And so does all the drones. What a nuke right there. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. The nuke on the position again. It's on this base. This poor base. I can't see the red dot though. Where on earth is the red dot? Maybe he's put it on like the blood or something. There we go. Directly on the hatcher, on the lair. Absolutely abolished one. Annihilated the base. Man. Oh man. There we go. The nuke is going to go down. Can it get the hatchery? Yes, it can. 300 minerals in the drink. We see more and more ultra stream. Remaining signs. Nuclear launch detected. The red dot on the hatchery has cold realized i don't think he has 
He's not pulling away. He's going for an all-in attack. But I want to watch the nuke. It's going to be so huge. Oh, man. All of the remaining drones are going to go down. There we go. Boom. Once again. And GG. Radley cleans up the final drones. And the game ends with Net Wars up 2-0. Oh my. Ah, Radley. You just keep giving. This game is the gift that keeps on giving. Mass Wraiths, Ghosts, another Observer gets sniped. And you know what happens when you don't have the Observers? You get nuked. Right? You get nuked. And there's going to be a nuke on the army. Let's actually zoom out. Oh, Horatos doesn't know. Oh, no. Oh! So many units going down. Zealots showing how overpowered they are. Standing in a nuke. They don't care. Oh. There we go. The nuke coming out of the silo. I got it that time. Okay, guys. Welcome back. We're here for game number three of Psy versus EF. This should be, I imagine, a relatively scrappy game. We've had a relatively scrappy series so far. Let's have a look at our map first. There's going to be multiverse. Uh, multiverse... One of my favorite maps in the map pool so far. It's been a little bit imbalanced in some matchups, TVT especially. Uh, but PVZ here has been very fun to watch. Uh, PVT here has been very fun to watch as well. And uh, who's he saying, get this man a new chair? I've been I've been looking at getting a new chair, but I can't really afford it this month. Well, I, I probably can, but uh, I'm kind of deliberating whether I want to do it. If you want to help me get a, get a chair, you can support through Patreon. Uh, if you want to help with the prize pool, you can spot Matarino as well. But yeah, if you want to help this man get a chair and get a good chair, Patreon is a good place to do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a really, really cool, uh, cool map. And Albert saying he thinks the Hard Toss game was one of his first games he ever saw for SCPL, which is kind of cool. That was a good first game to see. So let's have a look at our players. For Sai, it's going to be Marine. Unfortunately, unlike Kiko and Mitak, Marine doesn't have a cool photo to use. Uh, but Marine, 23% win rate overall. Three wins, nine losses against Zerg. One of, the, one of the things I'll say about Marine is he is the only player... Well, I think Radley did, Radley did this as well. Uh, but Marine is the only like super race picker where... Unlike when you have someone like Ariador, who does like ZVT, ZVP, and PVZ, uh, Marine just picks whatever he wants to do every week. So, uh, it, it essentially, like, some weeks he'll send in, oh, this week I'm going to play TVT, PVZ, and PVP or something. And then other weeks he'll be like, I'm going to play ZVZ, ZVT, and TVP. And it's like, what? <laughs> Makes it very confusing. Uh, but he is going to be playing Protoss this week. Uh, so hopefully this should be quite good. And his opponent going to be for EF. It's Pinkbrush. Pinkbrush, one of the uh, lower performing players on EF. He hasn't the best, or hasn't had the best of games. He's been up against some very strong opponents. So uh, his loss against, I would say his loss against Seriosity was probably the most heartbreaking TVP loss I've seen uh, in the SCPL season two. Uh, but. Really good overall, uh, just trying to think if there's any other games that I've seen recently of his that I'm like, okay, that's really sad that you've lost, but, well, it's one of those things that happen, but let's have a look at our map. It's map number three, it's multiverse, it's marine versus paintbrush as we get in to our next game. Okay, starting us off here in the 2 o'clock position, or the 1 o'clock position, we do have the red Protoss player fighting for Bulgaria for Sai, it's Marine. And his opponent spawning down here in the 2 o'clock position, close by air position, so this could be another... Oh my god, sorry. Sorry, Pinkbrush. It's gonna be Pinkbrush fighting for EF as the Blue Terran from South Korea. 
in the blue. And that's one to the two uh, AMAs. Dave, what does SCPL do? I've been waiting for months. This is driving me insane. What is it? What's it do? SCPL is a global team league uh, with players from all over the world playing Brood War matches each week. It's a lot of fun. That's what it does. It gives people entertainment somehow. I don't know why, uh, but people do actually tune in and watch, including you, apparently. And uh, yeah, Joss, what is this ask me anything nonsense? Well, that's what it is. You ask me a question and I answer it. So, there we go. <laughs> what, a, what a great question, Yaj. And I know you didn't need an answer, Dave, but I'm telling you anyway. Because you asked the question, and I answered it. Okay, so we've got gate gas coming in. We're likely going to see a call coming up after this from Marine. We've got Pinkbrush going for a wall in at the front. It's going to be a barracks expand from Pinkbrush. So, things looking pretty good for both players. I mean, it's looking good to be a possible macro game. And, uh, <laughs> Invidentia asking, who is the dirtiest cheeser? I'm gonna have to say La Buella, or La, La, La Buella. I don't know how to say his name properly. He's not played in the SCPL in a long, long time, if he's even played, but he played in Clash for Char. And he is the only player I've ever proclaimed to have gone full Peru. And the reason for that is we're on Fighting Spirit. And he had three separate techs on three different proxy pylons in the middle of the map. A Ricer asks, who is Kix? Uh, I, I am Kix, so I'm a caster. Hello. And Dave, once again, redeeming AMA. I'm going to need to up the AMA. Uh, he's saying, how does one pronounce Kix? Well, it's Kix, not Quix. I can't believe people, people abusing the AMA and Radley saying I'm a former pro. I wish I was. I'm nowhere near as good as a former pro. I'm a former noob and a current noob as well. I played on height sparkies along with all the other noobs. Just saying. No shade. <laughs> Lee saying someone isn't paying attention to the game. Well, luckily for me, there isn't too much going on right now. We've got the uh, gas coming up. The factory will be coming up soon after. Barracks coming in. The first uh, first Dragoons are going to be getting towards the bunker. And they'll start attacking. And now Pinkbrush has seen the fact there is a proxy pylon. Now is Marine going to stick to his plans? Or is, Yes, he is. He's going to proxy another gateway. And he's likely going to proxy three gate here. And that's pretty good. Yeah, Joe, unfortunately, uh, you, you asked the wrong question in your AMA. I'm not going to answer that. You're going to have to get enough channel points by watching the SCPL, and you can ask again. James asks, we all know what SCPL does, but where does SCPL does? Well, it does from the UK, but it, it also does globally. And fake Finn, I am incredibly sad that Fancy is not going to play tomorrow. But either way, we get Kanata, we get Go Rush, we get Best, we get Bisu, we get Sue. I mean, they're five really good players, so I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sadly, I'm going to be at work when it's on, so I'm going to have to watch the VOD. Now, these proxy gateways are going to... Oh, it's going to be a gate and a robo. Okay, so we're going to see Reaver behind this. He's not going to proxy four gate. Uh, Pink Rush is just an amateur. He's not a secret semi-pro or anything. And yeah, it is sad they couldn't get stats, and they also didn't put Zest in either. Like, P7 Gab, as he used to be known, or P Chul Gab, uh, which is actually his full, like, his Korean name in, uh, or P7 Gab, whatever. Uh, I don't think he's playing tomorrow either, is he? It's like Reach, Flash, Action, Wager, and, uh, someone else. Now, this is definitely going to be a problem for our Terran hero here. There is going to be a factory coming in. There's going to be a starport. But unfortunately, he's not going for a wraith. And there's going to be a, a drop in the main. There's going to be a reaver running up to the bunker. And that's going to make it very, very difficult for uh, Pinkbrush to be able to do too much.
He did have a very short game record, but he was a really good Protoss player. He was definitely up and coming. Peachel Gap was uh, pretty good. I'm just excited to see Kanata play again. I love watching Kanata play and he doesn't stream enough. God damn it. Okay, well, the Dragoon's continuing to attack the bunker. We've got a Dragoon and a Zella in the main. This could be the straw that breaks the camel's back as... I mean, Pinkbrush, he only has one tank right now. Uh, there is a dropship coming in. No, he cancels the dropship and goes for a Wraith instead. And there is a turret here as well. So, I mean... Pinkbrush has essentially been completely blindsided by this. The Dragoons have pulled away from the bunker. They're going to be driving into the main. And they're going to kill all the SCP. The SCVs here so far. And we've got a couple of Dragoons getting attacked by the SCVs here. The tanks doing their best to hold on, but there's now a Reaver. And the Reaver is about to drop off. And if this Reaver gets into the main, it's going to kill all of these SCVs. It's going to kill pretty much everything else. Oh my god, the Scarab. Are they getting two of the SCVs for now? Four SCVs going down with that one, though. And... Pinkbrush is still trying to hold on. He still technically does have two gateways. He has got a tank, which seems like a seems like a lot. But the Reaver going to clear this up. Oh my god, this Reaver Scarab! That was like five kills or something. And uh, more more Reaver Scarabs going down. The Wraith is finally going to come out, but at what cost? He's already lost so much. Well, fake Finn, Sue versus stats would have been cool, I guess, but... Just seeing Sue play Brewbor again is good. He tried to, um, tried to go into KSL, but... This game is pretty much over, guys. As much as I want to say that Terran has a chance here, the Wraith is going to be able to clear up the shot over the Reaver. It already dropped out in the natural. It's got 18 kills. 19 kills now. There's only 15, 14, soon to be 13 SCVs in the main. No, the Dragoons get cleaned up. But there's more Dragoons coming at the front. There's a second Reaver, and there is just absolutely no units that Pinkbrush has that can deal with any of this. Now the Reaver, the Hero Reaver going to go down to it. Oh my god, the SCP killed the Reaver. And I did miss a couple of AMAs. I'm going to answer them in a minute. want to get to the end of this game. Uh, but Sai has definitely got this Marine with a fantastic win. A very well played proxy play. Even though it was scouted, he still managed to hold on. Pinkbrush going up to check if there's an expansion. When he sees the expansion, he's likely going to get out of the game. And uh, that's how things are going to go. Now there's another there's another tank in the mineral line, but there's nothing to surround it. There's going to be a Reaver and a Zealot dropped on top of the tank. The final SCVs are going to go down. And I mean, that's, that's all she wrote in this game, unfortunately. The SCVs are doing their best, but the Reaver gets picked up at the last second. The SCV is trying to take out the uh, Zealot, doing a pretty good job as well. There's Dragoons getting into the main base as well. And uh, this is this is definitely going to be it, I think. A little bit unfortunate for Pinkbrush, another loss on his record. But Marine finally getting a very well-deserved win. He's been having really rough luck in his games. And uh, that's, that's how it's going to go. Even the shuttle goes down, but with five SCVs, there's pretty much no hope left in the game. And pretty good Reaver Micro, but that's it. GG, Pinkbrush taps out, and uh, Marine wins game number three. So this has been a very, very scrappy series so far. Obviously, we've had very, very short games. Uh, it's kind of cool to get a series like this. We don't often get, like, super aggressive series, so seeing one's always fun. Just to go back to the AMA questions I missed. Uh, Reister asks, how long is the average STPL drinks expedition? Well, uh, I can't even answer that because I don't know what the hell you're asking. Uh, Marine Medicorgy asks, is it true Yaj takes sick days from work when he drops below 2 KMMR? I do not know. Ask Yaj. I highly doubt it, but it could be true. And Fake Pin, hey, I already said about Fake Pin's thing. Uh, but the uh, SKT versus KT show match tomorrow should be absolutely incredible. Uh, if you want a link to the Team Liquid thread, have a look. It should be a lot of fun. And we will be back in a second uh, with game number game number four. See you guys soon.
Okay, we have a ton of Matrino code still to use, so I'm making this quick video to show you how easy it is to actually use them. So you click the Matrino link, it brings up the Matrino page. In the top right, you hit sign in. You sign in with whatever you want to. In this case, I'm going to sign in with Twitch. It'll take you back to the page, and then if you hit contribute, you put in the coupon code LSTPL. Uh, you can put a comment if you want to, and you can hit contribute right there, and it will add it to the prize pool. Easy as pie. Here we are on Multiverse, looking at the assimilators. You would have seen me bring up lots in various casts on both Troy and Multiverse, of course. Now, the way these work, and I've explained this before, but I'll go through it again. The footprint of a Vespine geyser is bigger than that of the assimilator itself. So, essentially, to begin with, when you have two assimilators next to each other, uh, all the units can get through. I know they got a little bit stuck. Maybe I should do this with just these units. Uh, so, everything can go through big and small units. Nothing to worry about here. Now, when you kill... One of these assimilators is going to take a while to do this, so uh, by the magic of production, we'll move straight forward. Now that's been destroyed, you'll note that tanks can no longer get through this uh, this gap here. It's a little, it's not very obvious at first glance, and your units will bug out. But as you can see, there's absolutely no way that tank is going through here. But the rain and the ghost still can. Now the reason for that is, as I said, the footprint gets slightly bigger, so it makes the gap around about that size, I think. So units like marines, medics, firebats, ghosts, zealots, lings, and hydras can get through. Now if we kill the other assimilator. Note now uh, that marines can no longer get through, even if I stim. Uh, I cannot move forward here. Now, there is one exception to the rule. When you have two geysers next to each other like this, it blocks all units. Apart from this plucky little man right here, it's a ghost. Ghosts can still run through, so the benefit of that is it allows you to be very, very sneaky with ghost tactics. It's not often you'll see them, uh, but if you're a Terran player playing on Multiverse, Troy, or Gold Rush, it can be a clever way of getting through and doing a quick nuke when your opponent may not be expecting them. Did you know it was possible to drop behind the naturals in Fighting Spirit? It's a bit finicky to land in the right place. You essentially need to... There's very specific spots in each of the spawns, which I'm going to try and show you here. Okay guys, we are back with uh, the fourth game of this series. It's EF versus Sai somehow. This series has not been going on so long, and we're already in game number four, but hopefully the colors are going to be right. Yes, they are. We're going to be heading in to this uh, ZBP, ZBP, or oh, ZBT, sorry. ZBT, obviously a fan favorite matchup. It is going to be on YL as well, which should be fun. So let's have a look at the map to start with. YL, very fun three-player map. In terms of TBZ, Terran are currently four to one up. Uh, definitely... Pretty good, and Radley saying, did you know that there are better usages of ghosts than nuking behind someone's natural? That is true, but nuking behind someone's natural is fun. Uh, so, <laughs> Radley saying, I was thinking of nuking both natural and main at the same time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Radley, you need to get some more nukes in. But the trouble is, like, your games are so crazy that you, be like, you barely ever get to the point where you can use, uh, use nukes. But TBZ on this map, very, very fun. Three-play map, of course, so it does favor the Terran a little bit. A little bit harder for Zerg to get a third gas, but when they do, they can, of course, secure the other, uh, the other natural as well. So if we do get a long game, which I'm going to, I'm going to doubt, just given the fact that all of the games so far have been below 10 minutes, I think. Uh... I, I think this is going to be the way it's going to go. Probably going to be another fast game. Uh, but let's have a look at our players. Starting us off for Sai, it's going to be cold. Cold, in comparison to Mitak, who went out to find a foggy forest, went to the beach and got a cool picture on top of some rocks in front of the sea. So, 
at uh, sea or a massive link. I can't remember if Bulgaria is landlocked or not, so uh, please forgive me. Uh, uh, but cold, pretty good, and uh, doesn't do too badly when he comes out for Sai, but unfortunately, much like the rest of the team, he has a very low win rate. Uh, it's just the way it kind of goes with Sai. They, they have a strong team, uh, but unfortunately, everyone else in the SCPL is super, super, um, super, super strong. Man, I don't know what on earth I was going, but either way, uh, his opponent going to be Blaze for EF. He's got a 53% win rate overall, is rank 50 in the SCPL. Uh, he's 2-3 to three against Zerg, so interestingly enough, there is a Terran like me who doesn't have a fantastic TVZ winning record, but uh, TVT Blaze has done pretty well, and TVP he's done pretty well as well. So let's get into game number 4. It's Cold versus Blaze, and it's going to be here on White Owl. Okay, starting us off down here in the bottom middle position, we do have the Blue Zerg fighting for Sai. It's Cold from Bulgaria. And his opponent spawning up in the top right hand position in the wonderful Magenta, fighting for EF from South Korea. It's Blaze. Now, you may remember Cold from the uh, game he played against Radley on New Empire of the Sun, where he got nuked a lot in one of the uh, clips I always show. That was an incredibly close game. Of course, I only show the nukes, but uh, he did a really, really good job there. His EBT is strong, but he needs to get to the late game. Early game, he struggles a little bit, uh, and Blaze, I think, in comparison, is very good in the early game. So... Hopefully, this is going to be a good one. Tangard saying, imagine if this becomes like one of the greatest games of all time. That would be good. I would be amazing. Uh, I'd be amazed if that was the case. Like, we've had some really rough games. So I, when I say rough, they've not been they've not been badly played by anybody. It's just that they've been so down and dirty that the games have been ending in less than 10 minutes. Which, while to be honest for me, is not too bad because it means I get an earlier night. Uh, it, it also means like... For you guys, uh, the games end a little bit quicker, so we get less chance to get more viewers in, and overall, uh, less people get to enjoy the games. But there is, of course, the YouTube and the Twitter and everything on the links below, so if you're ever bored when SCPL isn't on, there is some more SCPL content to be had. And a massive shout out, of course, to Liquipedia uh, for being an amazing sponsor. Uh, also Matarino as well. If you want to donate to the Matarino to improve the money on the prize pool, you can do it for free with the code LSCPL, or you can also donate your hard-earned cash. Or if you want to support me as a streamer uh, and support a more full-time lifestyle of doing this, then you can support on Patreon uh, to ensure essentially that I get a more guaranteed income from it so I can make difficult decisions later down the line about maybe either cutting days out my work schedule to do this more full-time or eventually doing it full-time. So if you want to help out, look at Patreon. Now in terms of what's going on in the game, we've got a 12 hatch coming in here for cold. Uh, we've got Blaze going for a barracks fast expand. So pretty much the most standard openings you could want in a TVZ if you want to see a macro game. So that's good. One thing I will quickly say about the Patreon is if you want access to all of the SCPL replays, of which there are now over 1,150, uh, you can get access to all of them for just $5 a month. Uh, that'll give you access to the Patreon channels on Discord and all of the replays to download. So if you ever see like Radley's new games, you're like, I really want to learn how to do that, and you're not too sure how, I mean, you could just ask Radley, he's very helpful. Or you could check out the replays from Season 1, uh, the replay from Season 2 where he played against CRVT as well, and have a good time. And as Buena says, if Psy can win this series, EF are going to be in a lot of trouble. It's going to make things a little bit easier for Rev, 
Net Wars and uh, trying to think of the other team that are just a little bit off the mark. Gonna check the overlay. Yeah, so for Ash, Rev, and Net Wars, EF, win or EF losing here would actually be really, really good for them. Obviously, for EF, they want to win this uh, just because that's going to put them a little bit hard. And Albert, uh, you can get the replays from the league somewhere. They're on the uh, SC Build Discord if you are a Patreon. And also Red, yeah. Uh, Red are kind of tied up at the moment. I mean, I mentioned this before. Uh, I mentioned this before even, but essentially there's like three teams that are in... Well, no, sorry, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams in the middle of the table, uh, down from fourth to eight, uh, fourth to twelfth, where they are so tightly packed together, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to... I mean, I can't call who is going to get into the playoffs. I think the top three spots are decided, essentially, uh, with White Clan, Soul, and... Uh, a soul, sorry, soul Valhalla team and White Clan at the moment. Uh, but below that, it's anyone's game. That means there's five spots in the playoffs up for grabs. The top eight teams will be heading into the playoffs. Uh, the the first place in the group uh, will be heading into the first semi final. The second seed in the group will be heading into the second semi final. Third and fourth will be going into the quarterfinals, and fifth to eighth will be heading in to a round before the, four, uh, the quarterfinals to work out who is going to move forward and face against team f uh, team f 4 and 5. No, 3 and 4, sorry, team 3 and 4. And then obviously the winner of that will go into the semi-finals and fight team 1 and 2. And then we'll have the grand finals at the very end, which will be a best of 7. It's going to be a lot of fun. The season 1 grand finals came down to the very final game. Uh, to give you an example of who, well, to say who the players were in the Season 1 Grand Final, the Grand Final Ace match, so it went to a Game 7, was Best versus Noob. Uh, noob for Soul, Best for White, that is SK Telecom's Best as well, the uh, like S plus, uh, S plus rank, X Pro, also current Pro as well, and it was an incredible PvP. Uh, the VODs are up on YouTube if you want to go and check them out. You can check the replays out through Patreon, so... I think that was arguably one of the best PvPs I've ever seen. And I'm not just, like, it could be me exaggerating a little bit, but it was one of my fa uh, my favourite series ever to cast as well. So, I really, really enjoyed that finals. Hopefully Season 2's finals will be amazing as well. Now, uh, we've got Cold going for a 3-hatch muta play here. Not the most standard anymore, given 2-hatch is a lot more common. Uh, but going up against a 1-rax expand... Into plus one five racks. Three hatch is actually a little bit better uh, than two hatch. Now, Shimmer, this is Magenta. I guess Magenta is kind of pink. Uh, but if we want to, if we want to be. What's the right word for this? If we want to be pedantic, it's Magenta. The actual pink is a lot lighter. But Magenta is still an amazing color. Magenta on Protoss as well is my favorite. And it's not teal, guys, it's Malachite. Me and, me and Rapid checked all the hex codes. Now we've got the Marines coming in. One of the Marines... Do, oh, a couple of Marines go down. One of the Mutas goes down as well. Looks like Cold is definitely doing a good job. The important thing to remember here is Cold is on match point. If he can win this game, he will win the series for Psy. And EF will be in a lot of trouble getting into the playoffs a little bit later on. Uh, but there's still obviously a little bit of time left in this game. There's a lot of Sunkens. Well, there's a lot of Sunkens done already. Three are going to make it near impossible for Blaze to be able to push forward. Uh, but due to his positioning of the Marines... Cold essentially cannot do any harassment, and that's uh, that's a little bit difficult. Now the Marines are going to push forward. They are going to realize they can't do anything. They're going to stim back. Another Mutalist getting picked off there. The Marines definitely doing a good job. Now the important thing to remember is these Marines have plus, well they have one range essentially, because they cannot see beyond their one range in that forest. Now... Blaze is looking forward to move forward with a ton of Marines. The Sunkens are going to be very strong, though. You need a Marine. Uh, or you need a Medic per Sunken, essentially. But the Mule is not trading very effectively. The Sunkens have held on. They are quite battered up, uh, but they're doing okay. Uh, but the Mule need to be very careful. Plus one is done. Albert saying Marines can take plus, or well, with plus one can take three Sunkens. You'd be surprised, but they can't. <laughs> 
Uh, there's also four sunkens now as well. The lings are very important. Obviously, firebats are very, very important as well. Uh, but essentially, uh, I think the rule of thumb is, the formula, is you want one medic per sunken plus an additional one. And that usually covers everything. The firebats obviously deal with the lings. The mutilists soak up a load of shots as well, though. Now, there is a third base coming in from cold, playing this very, very greedily. Uh, there is Hive already as well. Wow, I didn't even notice the Queen's Nest coming up throughout all of this. Now, what is this Hive going to be for? I don't think this is going to be for Ensnare, but it'd be amazing if it was. And then maybe this really would be the best game of 2020. <laughs> and yeah, there is a Sunken Colony uh, attack symbol with no upgrade. It's called the Subterranean... Subterranean, yeah, subterranean tentacle. I don't know why I was expecting that to be T E R R A I N for terrain, but I guess it's Terrain. No, it is Terranian. I never realized that. I've been spelling uh, like subterranean wrong my entire life, I imagine. Maybe this is the weird American way of saying it. I don't know. But what is the high for? It's for Defile Amount. Consume is on the way. And when Consume gets here, it's going to be very difficult for Blaze to be able to push through. Now the Marine's going to be pushing through the forest once again. Looks like a lot of the... Uh... Oh no, one of the Lurkers going down. That's a massive misstep here. Uh, but looks like he is going to be able to survive for now. I don't know where the Mutilists are in all of this, actually. Are oh, they hitting up here? He's only got three of them. Is he going to go into a Great Aspire? No, no Great Aspire for him just yet. Uh, but this is going to be near impossible for Blaze to be able to break. So even though there's only one Lurker, with four sunken colonies here, it's going to be difficult. Now there is going to be a double dropship coming in. This is obviously going to turn the tides, flip the script, as uh, dropships coming in going to make it very difficult for our Zerg play, who's mostly got links to be able to hold on to his main. Now, could this drop actually be a little bit too much? There's two Lurkers in the main base now, but if he moves his Lurkers up here, uh, it's going to give him the ability to push forward. Now, interestingly, there's no medics here, which is crazy. Why would you drop no medics? All of a sudden, a lot of units going down, but the double dropship's filling up again, dropping off again. And suddenly, because he's teched so hard, because he's barely got any units, I think Mitak's just going to lose the... I'm sorry, Cold's just going to lose the game, and we could be going to an ace match. This is ridiculous. There is absolutely nothing Cold is going to be able to do against all these Marines in his base. He's lost it to Fire Mound. He's going to lose his supply. Uh, no, he's lost his pool. He's going to lose his Evo Chamber. Going to lose his Spire. Going to lose his Hydra Den. Going to lose his Hive. And there's still so many units out the front. Yes, there is a hatchery down here. But that is not going to be enough to hold on. Two Lurkers coming in on the high ground. They get scanned immediately. Going down from Grey Sweating. And I think this is bound to be it. I don't see how it's even possible for Cold to be able to come back in this game. He's taken so, so much damage. And this is why you can't tech to the nth degree. You have to build attacking units. GG, Cold taps out. And Blaze takes us to an H. Uh, takes us to the ace match. Well, that was a pretty exciting game by Blaze. Of course, Cold was doing a good job holding on early on, but Blaze continued to keep on the pressure. Cold tried to play too greedy, went for Hive, went for a really quick third base, and unfortunately neither really come into effect. There wasn't enough Lurkers, there wasn't enough Mutalisks, and that's going to take us into an ace match, which, which is obviously... Uh, going to be on Neo Arkanoid. So if you guys, while we go to a quick break, want to have a guess uh, who you think it's going to be, you'll find out who it's going to be playing in the Ace match when we get back after this short break. See you guys very soon. Toss a coin to your content creators, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty, oh, oh, oh. Toss a coin to your content creators, a friend of humanity.
Oh my. Albert and Fushikura in chat guess it right it's Blaze versus Marine starting us off in the top left hand position we do have the pink Terran fighting fraternal friends all the way from South Korea it's Blaze and his opponent spawning us off here in the top right hand position in the blue fighting from Bulgaria it's blue fighting from Sai Uh, it's it's the ace match custom use so it's best of five uh, three over two is that how you say it I can't remember While this game starts up Adele SC123 asks the zombie apocalypse is coming who are the three Starcraft people you want on your team? Hmm I mean, it depends. Like, is this just them as humans, or do they have their, like, gaming skill? And does that affect what goes on? Uh, because it would definitely be, like, Fancy Kana oh, fancy Oove and Boxer if they were, uh, if they were controlling armies for me, because I'd never lose. So... But if it was, like, your, like, physical ability, I'm gonna say best Nada and, uh... Best Nada. I'm trying to think of who the other really strong pro gamers are. Actually, there's probably some like really buff, like really strong Russian Terrans like that I'd pick, but I don't know any of them. Like Grime Boss looks like he'd scare people, which is good. Now this is of course the Ace Match game number five. The winner of this will take the match. Blaze is going to be going for a barracks fast expand. No, a barracks into a factory. And he's going to be able to float his barracks in the right location. Uh, Reister, or James, is asking how much STPL does... Do how much does does STPL does does if STPL does chuck wood? STPL does 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 doesn't chuck wood. There you have it. Actually, uh, if I really wanted to pick people for a zombie apocalypse, I guess I have to pick the American players because they're the only people with guns. I'm fairly certain guns would be quite useful in a zombie apocalypse, so any any American players with a gun want to wanna step up? Maybe I'd pick Yaj because we all know he's like an Adonis. And uh, he's very pro-gun, so he's probably got like a stash of them. And Mithank with his pickaxe, that's a very good point, Fake Finn. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, okay, I, I changed my vote. I picked Mik uh, Mithank because his pickaxe has more uses than a gun. Because Americans may have guns, but they don't know how to use them, so... Like, unless they've been to the military. Mithak and his Mithax. Let's do it. He's got good melee power. Now, with what's going on in this game, Blaze is going for... Oh, my goodness. Someone call Radley. Someone call Radley. He's going two starports. Two starport rates and a TVP. Radley, this one's for you. <laughs> This is very, very rare. It can work. We've already got a robo up though for Marine if he goes for an observatory and goes to continue building Dragoons. Two Port Wraith is not going to do anything, but we'll have to see what's going to happen now, of course. This is a very important game for EF. I've mentioned it in this series previously, but if EF can win this series, that will put them in a lot better standing and a lot better position to go into the playoffs in season uh, season two but if marine can win this game Sai can't get to the playoffs but they can mess it up for others and we'll have to see how that's going to go now he is really badly wanting to kill this uh this barracks 
Look at this, chasing it down with a Dragoon. Trouble is, the Dragoon's going to go out on the map, and look what's going to happen. There's going to be a Wraith. It's going to fly in. It's going to kill the shuttle, and it's going to be Cloak. Now, is there an Observatory coming in? There's no Observatory. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. This is, uh, this is not looking good. <laughs> Cloak Wraiths against no form of detection whatsoever. There is a control tower, Albert, and he's researching Cloak, so... This is, uh, this is not looking good. All the observatory coming in. Okay, this is clutch. Getting this observatory is so unbelievably important. Now, losing the Wraith in the shuttle, obviously going to be a massive problem. But he is going to be able to see the fact that there is Wraiths coming in. And that's at least going to give him time to be able to react. Now, this is very, very unfortunate. Marine is going to fly directly into these Wraiths. Well, the Wraiths are... Oh! He's got... No! No, don't fly over the unbuildable. Drop your units. Oh, no. He's going to lose the Zealot. No, the Zealot pops out. But there is Cloak. And there is still no Observer. The Observer still on the way. Is there Scan? No, there's no Scanner. Because there's no Academy. The Barracks went down. So this is the one lucky thing here for Marine. As long as the Observer pops out. As long as he gets enough Dragoons, he should be able to hold on. But this is incredibly important. These moments in this game are worth their weight in gold. Now, Mar Blaze, unfortunately for Marine, is on two base. Marine is still on one. The Observer can't defend both bases. There's enough. Wraiths now start to do some serious damage to this probe line. And as soon as Marine moves his very slow Observer down, the Wraiths are going to fly away and come back another day in a different place. Marine needs to just sit at home and defend, essentially. He does have a second observer, so that's something. Uh, it's really, really useful to have that, Neil. Looks like we are going to have the Zealots trying to take a third base here for Marine, but they will eventually get taken down by the Wraiths. Now, was a dropship made throughout this? No, there wasn't. So there's no dropship coming in. Race getting repaired back at home. There is 33 SUVs to 21 probes. All is not lost just yet, though. Uh, there's enough defense of both bases now that the two-port race shouldn't really do too much. Uh, but Blaze is going to go into a third base as well. And we're still looking like we can get into a macro game here. And yeah, uh, Buena. Uh, Marine is the Protoss player. Mar as I mentioned before, like I don't know if you've heard me say it, but Marine essentially plays all three races. And he race picks. But unlike everyone else, he just picks three random matchups to do each week. I think he bases it on map and what he actually wants to play, but yeah, he's like the one true like supreme race picker that just picks deliberately from all three. Second base is up and running from Marine. At least the pro production in the natural is pretty consistent. The pro production in the main has a little bit of work coming in. Uh, but Marine just needs to continue to add more units on. Now we are going to get Corsairs. I don't know how I completely missed this. Corsairs are incredibly good against Wraiths. Uh, much like Valkyries, Corsairs completely shred Wraiths at every possible opportunity. They do stack up so, so well. And I believe Corsairs do full damage. Now, Scouts, of course, do more damage to air, but unfortunately, we're not going to see Scouts here. Now, here come the Wraiths once again. There is a scan this time. Oh my god, he gets the Observer. No! Marine loses both Observers. The probes are going to go down. The, the Dragoons are going to be in trouble now as well. And losing those Observers is absolutely key. What a fantastic move here by Blaze. He's going to be able to scan again, and there's another two Observers on top of each other. If he gets more of these Observers, it could very well just be game. Now, the Wraiths are going to be chased away by the Corsairs for the time being, but not without doing a ton of damage already. And as Radley said, you need to build cannons against this. Radley is the king of Wraiths against Protoss. Another Observer goes down. There's nothing that can see the Wraiths right now. And finally, we're getting cannons, and this is a little bit too late, possibly. While this is going on, Blaze is up to, I believe, that's five factories over here. I know it's four uh, for the time being. He's going into a lot of uh, units now. Did we just see another Observer go down? No, the Observers are alive, so that's good. 
But there's three bases up now for Blaze. He is getting ready to take his third. It's not quite done just yet. Killing the Chrysalis first. But with four factories back at home, he stopped race production and is going to go into mass dropships. And that's going to be very, very difficult for Marine to deal with. He's obviously got a lot of Dragoons, but Dragoons on their own do not fare well against tanks dropping into your base. He can't really uh, go in against anything. He can't get shuttles across, so he can't do anything else. And yeah, Radley making a good point. He shouldn't have flown in with the observers stacked. He needs to keep one a little bit further back so the race over commit. And then the uh, they fly into more observer range. But it looks like the race, the count has been diminished quite uh, quite a lot. He's not going to bother repairing these again. Uh, so it looks like the race is just going to be used to scout around. Check all the other bases. Make sure that he's not been caught off guard by a hidden base anywhere. As that is certainly a way that you can lose on this map. Seriosity against Pinkbrush one like that when it was Naz versus uh, EF as well. Well, sorry about that. Uh, looks like we are going to have three dropships loading up, heading over to the top right-hand corner. The Corsairs catching them, though. This is actually really pivotal. But unfortunately, the dropships, they don't take full damage from these Corsairs. And they're split. So the tanks are going to get out here. There's going to be scans to kill the Dragoons. And if he'd have gone scouts, maybe he'd be able to kill the tanks. But right now, he does not have the option to. There is double Stargate. He could go into a couple of scouts. And that would be really cool. Uh, but unfortunately, scouts are very expensive. There's no fleet beacon, so there's no... Or well, there is now. But there's no disruption web. There's no carriers. And even going for carriers at this point is a little bit too late, I think. Uh, because Blaze is just going to continue dropping more and more units over. He is going to repair up these rates. Love to see it. And more and more units are going to be dropped over here. The Corsair is trying to come in. And snipe the remaining air units. Snipe the remaining dropships. Uh, but unfortunately he's not going to be able to. Now the tanks. A few of them have. Uh, I don't think all of them dropped. So a few of them did get. Did get caught off now. It looks like the third base is going to go down. From the tanks and the pizza wedge. Dropships being forced back once again. Wait did he kill both the dropships? He did. Oh my god Valkyrie. Oh, it's my favorite unit in the game. It's going to be Valkyrie versus Corsair versus Wraith versus Dropship versus Ground Units. And this is looking pretty good. Now, we do have Carriers. Unfortunately, we're not going to see a Scout as well. Uh, but going into Carriers in this position, not too bad. Three base Carriers, certainly better than two base Carrier. Blaze hasn't decided to try and push through the middle of the map at all. Looks like the uh, Valkyrie here for moral support. <laughs> ra ra <laughs> Radley's losing his mind here. He can't stand the Imposer, he says. Oh my goodness. Well, by the way, Lucky Noob, I know you saw... Oh, here's the... Uh, oh, a Dragoon drop. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Five tanks. None of them can shoot this Dragoon. Oh no. This is... Wait. He's got Zealots right there. Pick up the Zealots. Send them in. Now we've got Corsairs versus Valkyries versus Wraiths. This is something I've always wanted to see and it's not on Sparkle. Two of the, uh, two of the Valkyries... Or, uh, two of the Corsairs dying immediately. The Valkyries doing so, so much damage to these. The Wraiths helping out as well. And that was definitely a fantastic air battle here by Blaze. And suddenly there is a ton of units coming in through into the main base. Uh, looks like we are going to get Blaze relocating after he's killed the Nexus. That Nexus going down is a massive boon to Marine. Marine doesn't have any carriers yet. It's still going to be about a minute and a half, I believe, until all of the... Uh, oh my god, he doesn't even have an intercept upgrade. Oh no, Marine is kind of falling apart in this game. Blaze has done a fantastic job. But yeah, it looks like this could be it. There's a lot of Dragoons, but I mean, Valkyrie's going to clear out the uh, shuttles. They're going to clear out the additional Corsair. And that's going to be it. Now, uh, Alba, I think it was, sorry, yeah. 
And when you said sorry there, I thought you were apologizing for the question. But Marine's army's falling apart, please. His army's too strong with 1-1 one, one upgrades against someone trying to go carriers. The game's over. Marine's saying my leader was right about the map. He blames the map. He said he's never going to play this map again. And that's it. GG. Sai, unfortunately for a lot of teams in the SCPL, have won the series 3-2. Now, the important thing about that, as Radley pointed out, like he should have gone for D-Web because D-Web would have stopped all the tanks from shooting. There would have been nothing uh, that Marine would have been able to worry about because essentially the Goliaths can move, the race can attack. But who gives a damn about those? Uh, but either way, it was a fun series. It was very back and forth, very scrappy. Uh, but Eternal Friends winning that series, definitely going to feel happy uh, knowing that they've got closer to securing their place in the playoffs in season two let's have a look at the results and then we'll go through a few things as well and now kiko winning over goku chaelin winning over mitak marine taking out pinkbrush blaze taking out cold and blaze taking out marine with the two kills to finish off the series three to two for eternal friends now of course that does bring us to an end of our series today but before we go, let's have another look at the uh, team rankings because every single sorry, every single series from now on is so unbelievably important. And uh, this is why. Let's have a look. So after that series, Bull are going to drop down, or after the series from earlier, Bull is going to drop down to 11th. So they are going to lose their position in the top eight. And that is going to mean Eternal Friends are going to move up with their win. Uh, they're going to go 6-5. Red on 6-4. They've still got one game to play. So they're going to be hoping for a win against IRK. And IRK are going to be hoping for a win against Red because it's very close to the top there as well. Uh, Ash and Naz moving up by virtue of uh, Bull falling down. And Net Wars move up as well. So by falling down 0-4, uh, Bull have actually lost 5 positions. That's how insanely close that is. My goodness, the games on Wednesday, uh, they're going to be, if I remember off the top of my head, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be SCPL. It is, of course, going to be SCPL. It's going to be DM versus Soul. It's going to be Red versus IRK and White versus Valhalla team. Uh, Iskra asking, can Rev still get, or Buena still asking, can Rev get into the playoffs? Yes, they can. Uh, Rev are in 10th. They are 5 for 6 at the moment. They're tied with Net Wars and Bull Team. But there's still two play weeks after this. So week 12 and week 13, they have a chance to move up. Uh, we're going to have DM playing against White. That's not going to change too much. And we're going to have, sorry, DM versus against Soul. That's really not going to change anything. Might change the first two positions. Uh, but that's very unlikely given Soul Gaming a plus 35. Uh, we're going to have Valhalla Team versus White Clan. Uh, which could change third place. Uh, but once again, very unlikely due to the game difference. And IRK versus Red is the most likely to make a difference. Because either way, one of the teams will be going 6-5. Uh, so they could drop to 7th um, place. They can't drop lower than 7th. Uh, because essentially 6-5 uh, is obviously the lowest it can be. But Eternal Friends, their game difference is uh, quite bad. So it looks like Red or IRK, they're either going to swap. They're probably just going to swap around in third and four, fourth and fifth. So overall, Rev definitely do still have a chance. It's good for them and very well deserved. They've played fantastic this season. There's so many teams that have done so, so well this season compared to season one. And there's so many teams that did well in season one and uh did well in season two as well so i mean I, I don't say this nearly enough uh i say thank you to a lot of people of course thank you to liquipedia our sponsor as well as Matarino uh for supporting the prize pool uh there's going to be a bracket contest from liquipedia as well for the playoffs so you guys can win some prizes uh from team liquid which is kind of cool and uh obviously thank you to you guys for watching but the biggest thanks that I never give and I should give more is to the team captains and the players because without those guys, without those girls, we would not be able to see all these amazing games and uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's been really fun. Thanks for the good stuff. Uh, thanks Captain Kronk for the $5 sub, uh, 
five dollar donation man means so so much thank you for the support and of course thank you to our patrons as well uh, if you want to support the scpl you can do it multiple ways uh firstly you can continue watching you can share uh our stuff on social media youtube twitter all the links are down below uh, you can also share stuff on reddit clip things when you're watching if you do want to support monetarily you can support through matter you know someone's post well moobot posted the link thankfully for me if you use the code lscpl you can add money to the prize pool completely free or you can donate to the prize pool directly our current prize pool is up at around 1300 us dollars we're 200 dollars off what we got in season one so if we can push before the end that would be amazing uh thank you of course to uh, some massive donations from uh pure pat cobalt blue and des as well on there and if you want to support me as a streamer want to help me take this more full time um then please support on patreon the links down below there's many different tiers you can get like little highlight intros you can get highlight videos of which you'll see uh during the breaks and stuff like that and uh you can also just get the replays for five dollars so Radley saying at least we got to see one ghost at the end of the stream that is fair that is very fair uh i missed a couple of ama questions i think oh no i missed one lucky noob says what question do you want to be asked anything ask me good questions ask me questions about the scpl ask me questions about maps just don't ask me stupid questions I don't like stupid questions, they're hard to answer. But once again, thank you so, so much, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to find someone to raid, and I'll be back on Wednesday with some more STPL Action 2100 CET. Twitch.tv forward slash STPL. See you guys there.